What's going on guys? I want to start a new series of videos on this channel uh, that will be called Shop Project Videos. And uh, these will be very similar in theory to my shop tip videos in that they probably won't have any real regularity to them. Uh, but they'll just uh, kind of happen when uh, things come up, uh, either out of need or want. Uh, if it's maybe a small project, uh, like building a tool or a part, and uh, something that I think you guys might be interested uh, either in seeing or knowing how to do, or uh, maybe even duplicating for yourself. And uh, ideally these will be fairly short, uh, maybe one or two parts maximum. And uh, again, something that's uh, very simple and easy to do and that uh, maybe anybody can do with uh, fairly simple or basic tools. And uh, ideally it'll also be something uh, with some common materials and uh, maybe even just some scrap or uh, junk or parts kind of lying around the shop. So to kind of kick this series off, uh, I want to show you guys how to make uh, something like this little scraper that I put together. And uh, really we'll just kind of be making a handle for a utility blade. Uh, in a scraper orientation and uh, this is something that I came up with uh, kind of off the cuff uh, out of necessity uh, to remove some stubborn wallpaper from the walls of my basement and uh, I've got several scrapers on hand uh, things I've purchased uh, over the years uh, at various hardware stores and uh, big box stores and uh, it seems like I went through just about everything I own and uh, was really not having any success with any of it uh, and uh, it really seemed like the biggest problem was either that it was too flimsy, uh, maybe it was too dull, or uh, any number of other things. So I kind of got the idea that if I could maybe secure a utility knife uh, blade or a razor blade and some kind of a handle, uh, that that would probably work uh, quite a bit better for me. And uh, it turns out that it worked uh, just about perfectly. So uh, very happy with uh, how it works, but uh, maybe not so happy with uh, the design. So uh, we'll see if maybe we can uh, spruce that up a little bit, clean it up, and uh, make it look like something to be proud of. But uh, the nice thing about this project, uh, again, it's going to be very simple, and uh, it can use uh, fairly common materials. I know everybody uh, has or has access to these disposable razor blades. Uh, we'll need uh, some kind of a screw and uh, you can get as fancy as you want with this. Uh, you can make your own thumb screw uh, that you can kind of crank down and loosen up uh, by hand. Uh, or you could use a bolt or uh, machine screw, any number of things like that. Uh, that's really not critical. But I think a very simple and easy approach is just these little fine threaded drywall screws. And then for the handle, I've chosen micarta, as it's very durable, it's waterproof, uh, it really doesn't tend to want to split or break or crack on you, uh, unless you're really abusing it. So uh, I think it's about as good of a material as any, although you could certainly use uh, maybe something like aluminum, uh, softer metals, uh, even some hardwoods. Uh, the concern really being, uh, for me, uh, would be kind of splitting down the middle uh, if you push too hard. Uh, now there are uh, some ways to circumvent that or to maybe lessen those chances such as uh, maybe putting a couple of screws to kind of clamp things in place or putting some pins in there uh, so that the back of the blade can't push down and uh, expand the slot any further. But uh, in the interest of simplicity and just using what we have on hand, uh, we'll go ahead and use this micarta. So, uh, like I said, this one's really not anything pretty. Uh, we'll see if maybe we can make this uh, just a little bit nicer looking. But uh, I think the size and the general shape uh, is pretty good. I actually really enjoyed using this. I like how it handles, how it works. So uh, we'll more or less follow this prototype here. Uh, but we may make some changes as we go along. So uh, as far as overall length, uh, I've got medium to large size hands and uh, I think uh, just around five inches for the handle uh, really seemed like it worked quite well for me. Uh, it kind of buries right into the center of my palm there. I can choke up on it, put some pressure down on it uh, however I need to and uh, it's just very comfortable uh, at that length. Now uh, that said, uh, 
this is really a very basic design, so uh, by all means modify it as you see necessary. Uh, if you need it longer, wider, uh, larger in general, uh, maybe you want to make it rounder or what have you, uh, by all means you have that option. Uh, this is just kind of a basic guideline for you. So uh, this is how I'm going to do it. If you want to change it, uh, there's plenty of freedom to do so. So uh, let's go ahead and lay this out. Uh, now. This was just a scrap I had kind of lying around that I cut off. Uh, it's just under an inch wide. And uh, it seemed to hold things fairly securely. But uh, I think maybe we can go the uh, full width of the back of this blade. And uh, kind of give a little bit more clamping surface. And uh, if we need to trim it down later, uh, that's definitely an option. But uh, let's go ahead and see what the back of this measures at. Looks like we're at about an inch and a quarter. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make this inch and a quarter wide for the rough blink. Actually, I'm going to get the combination square. And I had a scribe right here. And again, uh, plenty of ways to do this. This is just kind of the way that uh, I'm deciding. So go ahead and make a couple marks there. And if you don't have a regular scribe, uh, these combination squares normally come with one as well. We uh, certainly could use. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this over to my bandsaw. Uh, you can use a handsaw, circular saw, a jigsaw, probably even a scroll saw if you're careful. But uh, I have a bandsaw, so I'm going to cut this down, uh, kind of square it up, and uh, then we'll kind of draw out the rough profile of our handle, and uh, I'll come back with a camera uh, when that's ready. All right, guys, uh, we're kind of playing around with some layouts here. Uh, at first, I was thinking of kind of replicating this tapered handle, maybe just rounding it out a little bit more, uh, as it is quite comfortable, but... I think in the interest of ergonomics, uh, we're going to put a little swell on the back end there. Uh, maybe similar uh, to your razor blade, maybe your Mach 3 or what have you. <clears throat> and uh, this will all be rounded over on the belt sander. But uh, kind of ignore most of these lines. We'll just kind of follow this profile here up to the end there, the longer one. And then uh, for the slit... I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to do that, but uh, we're going to have an angle just to hold the blade at an angle. Uh, this is 15 degrees. I'll show you quickly how I uh, scribe that. And then I just put a center line down the middle of it. And uh, there's a few ways you could do this, uh, even with hand saws or a coping saw, uh, if you're careful, uh, or down a band saw. And we'll go ahead and cut the slot before we cut our profile uh, for maybe obvious reasons, as it's a little easier to handle. <clears throat> but again, a scroll saw, band saw, uh, I may even use a sledding saw on my mill uh, just to kind of go through the middle and then I'll clean it up with a coping saw or what have you. <clears throat> but uh, again, a number of ways to do that. Uh, as far as determining your 15 degree angle, uh, this is how I ended up doing it. Uh, if you got yourself a speed square, and then a uh, compound double square like this and they actually make uh, rules or scales for this to set up an angle uh, I unfortunately don't have that 
But I uh, went ahead and just took my speed square, found 15 degrees here, just marked a line on the edge of the workbench, and then uh, lined my square up like so. Hopefully, you can see that. And then uh, that gave me 15 degrees uh, off the straight there. And then uh, it's just a matter of lining it up, scribing your mark, and uh, that sets your angle for the razor blade. Uh, now, whether 15 is ideal, 20, 30, uh, I really haven't played with it. Uh, I just kind of eyeballed this one. And uh, it's give or take about 15. It seemed to work pretty well. And uh, you can always raise or lower your handle as you need to uh, to get a slightly different angle. But uh, for this build, we'll do 15. If you guys think a uh, deeper or shallower angle would be better, uh, by all means, uh, do it how you think it should work. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut these slots. Uh, again, there are several ways to do that. Uh, I'm probably not going to show it just in the interest of keeping this video relatively short. But uh, we may just do this on the bandsaw. Uh, it doesn't have to be a tight angle. It can be 